Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining us um, on this webinar. It's the second one that the WGC has done since uh, this all began. Uh, and we have with us Jill Sampson and Sean Bryan from Telefilm. And today they're going to talk about how to fill out your early stage development program application. So without further ado, I'm gonna let Jill take it away. Just one thing, if you have questions, please just type them out and uh, we'll be stopping to answer them. I'll be asking them on the panelists and uh, yes, here we go, Jill. Great, thanks. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm Jill Sampson uh, from Telefilm in the, my Toronto office and my colleague Sean Bryan is in his Montreal office. Um, obviously we're working from home like most of you, I would suspect. Uh, so we are going to start with the, an overview a presentation I put, uh, I made for a PowerPoint about the guidelines and then Sean, and then we'll ask some questions and then Sean is gonna talk about the very important um, applying to dialogue, uh, which is our portal where we do all of our business and how you, uh, how you access that. So, uh, and first of all, I should say, for anybody wondering why two people from Telefilm are talking about a Canon Media Fund um, program, um, we administer all of the programs for the Canada Media Fund. So they work with Heritage and write the policy and write the guidelines, and then everybody applies to us and we administer and we, and we do all the contracting and all the payments and everything else. So from the beginning to the end, it's all through us. So I'm going to share my screen. Sorry, everybody. Uh-oh. <laughs> what happened? Lana, I think I need help. It's not coming up. I'm sorry, are you, you're on mute, I think. I am. Here we go. All the difficulties. There I am. Yeah. So there should be a shared screen. Yeah, I don't actually. I don't actually see it. I'm so sorry, everybody. Do you oh, see there it? I got it. Yeah. I got it. Here we go. Cook him with gas now, guys. Here we go. Is it up? It's up. Great. Here we go. So, uh, I, as I mentioned, I'm Jill. This is Sean. Um, the uh, the early stage development program. So, the total amount of funding is 1.65 million. Um, it's uh, the deadline's October 15th, which is coming up. We've split it off into uh, same similar to last year, majority English, um, 1.25 million in English and 400,000 in French. Uh, these are the types of projects we support and that we expect um, you to apply uh, with. Uh, so drama, drama means basically scripted. So it can be comedy, it can be, you know, like a procedural, it can be whatever, uh, documentary, is a documentary one-off, it can be a documentary series, variety and performing arts, pretty self-explanatory, and children's and youth um, shows. That could be, it's mostly, would mostly be series. This is a really important slide because this is projects that we don't support. So we don't do how-to productions. So that could be like a cooking show, that could be a home renovation show. Um, game shows, talk shows, lifestyle's really tricky for us. A lot of producers think that their shows aren't lifestyle and for us, they are. Um, so that basically is sort of, you know, has an aspect of reality to them. Um, religious programming, reality television, current affairs, um, a lot of award shows, that's, some some shows can um, some variety can uh, doesn't always fall under uh, award shows so we can talk but anyway that's the list take a photo of it really important ineligible programming for us so uh, what's new this year so last year uh, in case some of you applied 
Um, it was very different. It was a first come first serve. We were really overwhelmed with applications. Uh, it's changed this year. It's now going to be a selective fund and uh, we're going to have two different um, streams. So one English, one French. It's going to be juried. So we'll have an English jury and a separate French jury. They'll meet on different days and um, look at the projects. Uh, we would really like a blind jury, which means that the jury members don't know um, whose project it is. So we were requesting that in your pitch treatment, which should be maximum 2,500 words, that you don't refer to past works, that you don't um, refer to your company um, or anything that um, um, would let a, a blind jury member know um, whose, whose work they were reading, basically. Um, also, uh, the juries will, uh, in the guidelines, there's points, uh, 100 points, and the jury will assess, uh, assess that. So it's going to be premise, plot, characters, structure, and themes. They're going to score uh, uh, out of 100. Um, at, the, uh, at the end of the process, there'll be three jury members on each project. At the end of the process, um, you'll be sent a decision letter. Uh, positive or negative, and you will be able to go into your dialogue account and read what the jury members wrote and how your project was scored. Um, it will say like jury one, jury two, jury three, you won't know who looked at your project, but you will be able to see the feedback. Uh, new this year is 15% um, of the budget, that's English budget and 15% of the French budget, will be reserved for applicants who are either Indigenous or visible minorities as defined under the Employment Act, and they have separate eligibility requirements. Um, and those are, they must have five credits, regardless of duration, of produced work, written work in any CMF supported genre, that's those four genres I showed you before, that has been broadcast or made available on a CMF eligible Canadian broadcaster. Do you have to be incorporated when you apply? You do not, but if you are successful, we need you to incorporate uh, in order to contract with you and, um, and um, make a payment to you. Uh, can you apply with more than one project? Absolutely not, one project per individual uh, corporation. If you received funding last year, you are also sadly not eligible this year, sorry. So uh, criteria for uh, non-diversity of voices applicants, 10 produced hours of written work in those four genres, uh, broadcast by a Canadian broadcaster. Also for the English uh, language only, you have to have received one producer level credit and be incorporated in Canada as a single shareholder company. Um, for feature length documentaries, um, the threshold will be six hours, and at least two of those hours must have been originally broadcast no earlier than January 1st, 2016. Um, and that's the, oh, the, uh, the writer must have received at least one producer level credit for live action, or if it's animated productions, it's a story editor credit. And I'm sorry, but associate producer doesn't work. Um, what qualifies as 10 hours? Um, we will accept teleplay or written by credits. If a team of writers has a written by credit, each writer gets to claim the credit and the hours associated with it. If you have a 45 minute drama script, uh, it'll count as an hour as 60 minutes for us because um, it, it, it was obviously produced for commercial television. And feature uh, films do count as long as the feature film uh, falls into one of our genres and it was broadcast by a Canadian at some point, by a Canadian broadcaster at some point. So um, an eligible applicant, a single shareholder company that is for profit, uh, you must be Canadian controlled as determined under the uh, Investment Canada Act. Your head office must be in Canada. You're in good standing with all applicable talent and industry associations and guilds. Uh, again, you don't have to be incorporated to apply, but you will have to be if, if you're successful. Uh, can I apply with a project that falls outside the genre in which I have the 10 credits? No. 
the CMF has determined that the project should be in the same genre as the credits obtained, um, the, as the 10 hours obtained by you, um, but you can combine, can combine children's and youth and drama together to, to make those uh, 10 hours. You can't apply with more than one project and you can't apply if you received funding last year. So what, if you do receive funding, what do we expect? Um, we expect successful applicants will have about a year um, after they sign the contract to produce the deliverables um, based, on the, um, based on your project. Uh, the required materials will depend on the amount of funding the individual receives and will be calculated on rates established. Um, okay. Uh, and I've, I didn't mention that the amount that you can apply for is $40,000. If I receive the funding, do I have to pay it back at some point? Yes, if you go into production, you do have to pay it back. If it doesn't ever get produced, no, you don't. Important notes, and I'm not gonna lie, this slide is sad news, guys. I'm sorry that I have to do this, but I don't. I'm just trying to manage expectations because this is gonna be the reality. We're expecting a lot of applications. So um, if you don't have the 10 hours or the five hours for the diversity of voices, we're not gonna make an exception. Um, we had a lot of applications last year that had nine or nine and a half, and it's just, it, we just can't accept them. If your credits are for non-Canadian broadcasters like YouTube, Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, whatever, they're not gonna be counted. They have to be Canadian broadcast credits. Um, oh, sorry about my typo for English applicants. Um, if you haven't received at least one producer level credit for live action or story credit for animated, oh my God, I must have typed this really fast. You will not be considered eligible. And as I mentioned, the associate producer will not count. I'm sorry. Um, this is really important. Um, on the CMF website under early stage development, there's a document checklist and you should use this as your Bible. Go through and, and, and submit every single document that is on this checklist um, in, order to be, in order to be eligible for the fund and uh, in order for obviously the jury to have something to look at. So um, it's incorporation documents. If you're incorporated, um, you can go through it. I'm, and, uh, the uh, eligible applicant form, um, chain of title documents is really important. We need to know that you know you have the rights to um, tell the story that you want to tell. Um, your pitch document, really important as I mentioned. Don't put any information about your company, past work. Um, it needs to um, be just fresh content for our jury to assess, please, and, um, and, and a budget. Um, this, I know some of you have already started contacting our coordinators, which is great. They're a good resource to ask questions to. Uh, that's the 1-800 number. Um, uh, please get in touch with them. And, oh. I, I did have a slide with our emails on it. I'm sorry, I don't know what happened to it. Um, but um, you can get in touch with us um, at, uh, at Telefilm. I'm jill.samson at telefilm.ca and I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Okay. And I think we can open it up now. Great, so there are a few questions for you, Jill. Um, I'm gonna start with, uh, we have one of the writers asking um, if a writer could be part of a producer-led application for another fund and also apply for this at the same time. If a writer can be a producer on something else? No, no. So if a producer is submitting an application package for a different fund and they've listed this writer, could this... Is it the same? Is it, well, as long as it's not the same project, it's fine. Projects. Yeah, fine. Okay, that's good to know. Um, and um, we have a question about the makeup of the jury. Uh, someone's wondering um, who's going to make up the jury. Will it be producers, broadcasters, writers? It will be. It will be their peers. So is the 
So just to clarify, is the entire jury all writers? I believe that's the hope. The CMF are, are going to be um, finding the jury members, but I believe they want to find other writers. Okay. No producers or broadcasters on it? Not that, I, not that I'm aware of. Good to know. Um, we have another person asking if the pitch materials could include visuals. Sure. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Um, does the story editor credit count in the 10 hours? I'm thinking, like if you have episodes where you're credited as a story editor, but it's not written by, would it count for the 10 hours? Um, no, no. Because last year specifically, it was the written by credit. That yeah, you, it has to be written by. It has yeah. to be written by. Yeah. Um, does a showrunner credit as executive producer count? I'm assuming that would count for the production credit. That would count for the production credit, not for the writing credits. Not for the writing credits. Yeah. Okay. Um, someone else is asking if you could articulate who the ideal candidates for this fund are. Um, well, writers who have been, um, have over, you know, 10 hours or more of, um, written by or teleplay by um, that has been produced on Canadian broadcasters. So if you've, you know, written on a, a drama series uh, for the CBC or Bell or whoever, whomever, Rogers, whatever, um, and you have that at, you know, that's who we're looking for. Great. And um, at this point, and then I guess there's also the jury component, but that's something that will you'll get into after the October 15th deadline. What do you mean? Well, um, someone's asking if the jury will be named publicly. Yeah, I'm sure uh, the, C the CMF is always really transparent. So after the decisions are made, they'll probably put out a press release saying who the jury members were. Okay, great. Um, someone is asking, about what is the reasoning behind not qualifying Netflix and other streamers towards the total credit count? Uh, because this is a, a Canadian, uh, this is the Canada Media Fund where, you know, this, this fund is um, partially, partially we get our money from Heritage and this is all about Canadian broadcasting. It's, it's not about um, having your credits um, outside of Canada. Right, and those broadcasters still currently pay into the Canada media. They do indeed. Okay, great. Um, for the diversity of voices component, is there a cutoff time for how long ago the producer credit? So basically. Yeah, I think the 2016 still applies. Yeah. Right. And that's for the producer credit? No. That was for the, um, that was for when it was, um, uh, aired, I believe. Right, so um, that's so two of the 10 hours. Yeah, left. it shouldn't, it must have um, been broadcast no earlier than 20, January 1st, 2016. Right. And that's for two of the 10 hours. It's not all the yeah. 10. Yeah, it's not all the 10, it's two. It's two of the 10. Um, but the producer credit, that could be from any time? Like there's no expiration? We're not, we're not really looking for, if you had a producer credit in 1987 and you kind of haven't done anything since, but, and you haven't written anything, I mean, yeah, that's, you know, yeah, that's, um, okay. Um, someone's asking again about the diversity of voices. Um, they're asking how the guidelines for that component were created. How they were created? why they were created? No, just uh, what, what was the reasoning into the guideline that went into the guidelines that were made? Well, I think, I, I think the CMF worked with the WGC and, you know, uh, that group is a very underserved group. And I think that they wanted to um, find some space for them in this fund. Great. 
And someone else is asking if the jury will be diverse in its representation. Oh, I, I would just suspect so. That's what I think. I, again, I have no real insight. I should, I did, <laughs> should qualify that um, as the WGC. We're not putting together the jury. CMF and Telefilm are. Um, well, CMF is. CMF is. Yeah. Um, you, I think you already answered this question, but just to reiterate, you do not have to be incorporated before you apply. Nope, you don't have to be. But if you are successful, you will have to be. And this person is asking, if they're not incorporated, how do they deal with the required incorporation documents that are being asked? Well, if you don't have any, you just, you know, you don't have any. Okay. Um, and as of yet, the jury has not been named? They won't be named until after the decisions are made. Great. Okay, great. Uh, we're trying to keep this as, um, uh, we're trying to keep a really level playing field, which is why we want a blind jury. I mean, we all know that most writers know other writers and, um, you know, we're, it's very difficult in a lot of funds that we have to find um, people who don't have conflicts. So we'd really like it to be conflict free. And that's why we're looking for, you know, just a pitch document that um, someone will read and not know who provided it. Yeah, we'll have absolutely no idea who created yeah. it, who's submitting it, um, which is the most fair form yeah. of communication possible, I think. Um, someone is asking about the genres. Mm -hmm. um, as stated, you should be applying, your project that you're applying for should be in the same genre as the hours that you've earned. Right. However, you can now combine drama and children's and youth. That's right. Can you, can you explain that a bit? Sure. So, um, if you are, um, if you've done mostly documentary series, and you want to, and you've done, you know, um, you know, your 10 hours in documentary series and you want to apply to this fund with a, um, uh, a kid show, it won't work. You need to stay in your lane, which should be documentary series that you have the credits for. Okay. Um, I'm getting questions all over the place here, which I thought would happen. Um, uh, someone is wondering if the uh, the award the, the, if there is a certain amount of money to be earmarked for each genre. No. Okay. No. So, for example, if you had thirty one that the jury voted in, they could all be from. I don't. I, I think. I think we're just looking for. We're trusting the jury to um, pick the best projects. So, a good story is a good story. So no, we're not here. No, there's we're not siphoning off the money for the different four genres. Okay. Um, someone's asking what the limitations are for projects that have been chosen. For example, um, if a Canadian broadcaster passes on this project, it, can it be developed with international broadcasters or partners? A after the fact, if they're if they're selected. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So you can shop it around. Sure, of course. Remember, if it gets produced, even if it gets produced overseas, they still have to pay it back, though. Yeah, they do have to remit the, the original um, yeah. development money. Um, someone's asking, and I think, well, I can also answer this. Just to clarify, for the hours, it's only two that must be broadcast 2016 or later? We're looking for new credits. Okay. So, so that's, that, that means we're looking for projects that have been produced in the last, like, you know, two, two if out of the 10 hours um, at, oh, well, at least two of those, um, yeah, broadcast no earlier than January, 2016. So, Right, so a minimum of two hours must be 2016 or later. Yeah. Broadcast, yeah. okay. Um, and someone's asking how many applications they can submit, and I think you answered that with one, correct? One. One, yes. 
Um, another question is, if a production company has a producer and a writer who meet the requirements, but another writer who does not have the 10 hours of credited work, would that application be allowed or eligible? No. 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 And this fund is for writers, right? It's not for producers, it's for writers. Right. And then um, maybe to reiterate then, the applications are submitted by a single shareholder or an individual. Correct. So there is no joint application? No. Okay. Okay. Somebody was asking about writing teams, but I think we've just covered that. Um, someone's asking if American broadcasters like Discovery will be eligible in the 10 hours. I think you've answered that. It must be a Canadian broadcasting entity. Correct. Um, and it could be a Canadian streamer like Crave. Sure. Sure. Or Gem or 2TV or sure. Right. So it's... it's Looney. Not, sure. It's no. not just restricted to, to just technically broadcast television. Well, I think, uh, right, you know, uh, can, a Canadian broadcaster includes those streamers now, so. Yes. Yeah. So it's no problem. That's what I mean. Well, for GEM, for example, there's stuff that they put on GEM that you don't see on the main yeah. channel, but that would qualify. Yep. Okay. Um, see, so many questions. Let's see. Uh, okay, writing team. Um, would a story editor, editor credit for comedy variety be considered eligible? For the for the producer credit meaning, or I think that's what they're suggesting. So they're going to apply to drama, and they've got the ten hours plus they have a, a story editor credit. Yes, but I don't think that counts as a production credit. So. Yeah, story editors, well, in the, according to the guidelines, is for animated. Uh, yes, that's right. Yeah. So that's the only case where story editor credit really is yeah. production credit, is in the animation category. Right. Okay. Um, this is a good question. If you received funding last year um, in the collaboration uh, access point, writer the creator collaborator access point could you apply to this fund this year um sean help me out uh, the creator collaborator that was the producer and writer one yeah that was the producer writer one yeah which does I'm, not exist this year well it does it's, it's the it does it's pre-dev pre-development pre-development it does exist so it's pre-dev so um I would say yes, probably you can you apply. Can. Yeah. Okay. Um, and just going back to the diversity of voices uh, eligibility, um, how is that five hours uh, accounted for? Is it all five hours of written by credits? Yep. Okay. It doesn't matter the length though for diversity of, uh, of voices. It doesn't matter the length. It doesn't have to be. Oh, it's just, um, it's five credits in total, correct? Five credits. Yeah, the, yeah, it's five credits. Right, so it could be five, 11 minutes, five half hours. Yeah, it says regardless of duration. Yeah, okay. of produce written work. Yeah, five credits. Not five hours, five credits. Five credits. Yeah. That is a great distinction to make. Yeah. <laughs> Does the project have to be based in Canada or about Canadians? Uh, no. Certainly not. I mean, you, you should probably go and look at our, um, at our guidelines, especially Appendix A, which describes, you know, what those four categories mean. So for instance, um, if you're doing a drama a series, um, it does have to take place in Canada. Or um, if you're doing a documentary, it doesn't have to take place in Canada. So you should go and uh, read Appendix A and the guidelines to understand um, all the rules. Okay, great. Um, another question about the diversity of voices eligibility. Uh, they wanna know if the credits can be from the same show. Yeah. Right, so it could all, all five credits could be from the same show. It, so if it's like, 
sure. So if it's, um, you know, five seasons of a show, I yep. guess. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, another member is uh, letting you know, she's saying thank you for doing this. Um, but how do you apply as a partnership? I'm a diversity of voices candidate, but my partner isn't, and we'd be doing the project together. So. Um, I would say uh, that would be a tough sell. So um, you'd have to apply. I don't think you can apply together. Not right. for the not for diversity of voices. That person would have to apply uh, individually. Okay. But if their partner uh, isn't a, uh, doesn't identify as for the diversity of voices, um, if they have the ten credits, they can also apply to the fund on their own. Okay, great. Somebody's asking what the breakdown of the hundred points is. Yep. So um, it is. Um, I'll just go back. Um, so it's premise, plot, characters, structure, and themes. It's in the guidelines. There's, um, it's written in the guidelines what the jury will look at. Okay. And we're not, we're not breaking it down. They're just going to be reading it as, uh, just, you know, they're going to be scoring it based on all of those. Um, someone else is asking if adult animation counts towards writing credits. Sure. Right. It, it would, I guess it would be, uh, you guys would determine what genre it fell under. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, I would be, um, I would be under drama, I guess. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, someone would like to further clarify the, the for the diversity of voices these credits have the five credits have to be written by they can't yep. be at like the story editor level correct okay great um okay uh somebody is asking if there is a strict divide between diverse candidates at 15 percent of the fund and 85 percent at non-diverse uh i'm not sure what that means but we uh, everybody should apply if they are eligible, um, but we are going to make sure that 15% of the English fund and 15% of the French fund goes to diversity. Right. If it's higher, great, but minimum 15%. Minimum 15%. Yeah. Um, and somebody's asking if the writing credits um, can be counted if they are airing in the future in Canada. Nope has to have already happened, correct? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so lots of questions. <laughs> um, with that, I think we'll give you a break, Jill. I mean, everybody will have a chance. I think we'll have some time at the end to ask sure. more questions, uh, but maybe we can move to Sean and get yeah. him. Because there will be lots of questions for you too. <laughs> <laughs> So I just want to make sure that everyone can see my screen. Yep. So I'm going to be running through the uh, the basic steps for preparing your uh, your application in dialogue. Um, as Jill mentioned, that's our online tool, and that's really going to be uh, the process in which you're going to se send your application. Uh, your project will be evaluated in dialogue by. Uh, our analysts and you'll really go through each step from contracting to final deliverables will all happen uh, in dialogue. So as you start thinking about preparing your application, you're also going to need to start thinking about uh, opening up an account. Uh, so the first step of doing that is going to the uh, address that you see at the top of the screen there. Um, if you are already have a dialogue, a dialogue account, great, you just have to log in. But if you're a new client, you're going to click on the create an account button that you see here on the screen, the yellow button. From there, you'll be prompted to enter basic information, your name, uh, last name, email address, and you can click on the create button at the bottom of the screen. 
and you'll receive a confirmation uh, that you'll, you'll be sent an email within a few minutes uh, with a temporary user ID and a temporary password. So once you receive that email, uh, there's a link in the email for you to go to the return to the uh, dialogue login page so that you can change your temporary password and uh, finalize setting up your account, which you see here. So you'll be prompted to change the password. You click on submit. And from there, you're in the dialogue environment. One of the first things that you're going to have to do uh, with your new account is go to the tasks tab at the top of the screen and accept the terms and conditions of use uh, for dialogue. And then from there, uh, the next step will be to click on the actions tab and create your organization. So you'll be asked to enter uh, your organization's uh, information, address, uh, all of that basic information, if you have them already in corporation documents, can be uploaded at this tab. Uh, as Jill mentioned, you don't have to be incorporated at the time of application, but you will eventually. So, but if you are, you can upload everything from here. You click on the submit button at the bottom of the screen, and you'll receive a message uh, that, uh, in, that you, that by confirming the creation of the organization in dialogue, you can move forward with the application process. Um, however, uh, if your project is selected for financing, you're going to have to create an administrator in dialogue uh, in order to move on to the contracting phase. Um, but for the time being, simply creating your organization is all you need in order to submit your application. Uh, a couple of tips uh, that we suggest that people do as they're preparing their application. Uh, number one is to get familiar with uh, the early stage uh, program guidelines, uh, as well as the reference documents and all of the downloadable documents that you're going to need to include in your application. Uh, so to get all of these documents, you just have to go to the CMF website, select the early stage program, and um, on that screen, you'll have two buttons, one for read guidelines, one for reference documents. Really important that you get familiar with all of this information before uh, submitting your application. Uh, the reference documents uh, Jill referenced earlier include uh, Appendix A, so all of the, applicable, all of the uh, eligible genres are listed in that document. CMF's business policies, as well as the new COVID-19 flex measures that were put into place uh, this year. As for the downloadable documents, uh, good to start downloading them now. You're going to have to upload them in your application uh, uh, as part of that process. So once you've familiarized yourself with the guidelines, and all of the refer reference documents, you can start building your application. So you just go back to your uh, dialog account, click on the actions tab at the top of the screen, and you'll see a link to submit your application. So the first part of that process in the application form is going to be to select your program. In this case, what you're going to be selecting is the pre-development program, and you're gonna click on the next button at the bottom of the screen which will bring you to uh, another drop-down menu called CMF Financing Programs. And it's here, you'll see the arrows here, where you select the uh, early stage development program, either in English and French, depending on your application. Second tip uh, as, you're, as you're preparing your application is uh, to familiarize yourself with the user guide. Uh, there's actually a link to the user guide uh, in, in dialog. You'll see it circled on the screen here. It's a PDF reference manual that really guides you through every step of not only preparing your application in dialog, uh, but any communication that you might have with your analysts throughout that process, uh, the contracting phase, it's all covered in the reference, uh, in the user guide rather. So, uh, and you have access to that at all times as you prepare your application. So once you've filled out the application form, uploaded all of your, uh, all of the required documents as part of your application, the last step is to read the applicant statement. 
and to confirm that uh, you've read it by clicking on the checkbox here. You then click on submit and you'll receive a confirmation that you've successfully completed your application and you'll be assigned a reference number for your application to keep track of. Something to note here, if you don't get that confirmation, uh, it means that you haven't successfully completed the application. There's either incomplete information or there are some errors. Uh, one thing about dialogue is it's not always obvious uh, where you might have omitted to fill out a, a field or made an error. Uh, you really have to comb through the application form and there are small red asterisks next to the fields where there might be an error or incomplete information. So really go through that if you don't receive the confirmation, but once you do, uh, you're good to go. So just to summarize here, a couple of things to keep track of. Uh, start creating your dialogue account early uh, uh, before the opening date. Familiarize yourself with the program guidelines, the reference documents, the downloadable CMF documents, and by all means, the deadline to apply is 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on October 15th. Uh, as Jill uh, might have mentioned, we had some issues last year for applicants out west who thought that they had uh, until midnight, but it was actually Eastern Standard Time. Uh, and don't send your application a few hours before that deadline. Try to prepare it as early as you can on the day of the 15th and, uh, and submit it early on. If you have uh, any questions, you need support or uh, uh, just questions about the basic, uh, basic application process, you can, for enrollment questions, you can contact our services team at the website, or uh, sorry, at the email address you see here. And if you have any specific questions about the guidelines or the application process, we have our coordination team that is available to help you here. Uh, that's their general email address. Somebody will contact you in order to provide you with any help that you might need, or coordination can also be reached at the 1-800 number that you see up on the screen. Great, thank and you. that is it. That covers the application process. Okay, so we've got some questions for you. Um, some of these, uh, I guess the first one to ask is, um, do you have to wait, can you submit before October 15th? Yeah. So when will the full applications be available to you? Uh, October 1st, I think it's generally like two weeks. IT opens it two weeks before, right, Sean? Yep, that's typically the process, yeah. Right. And the application documents are all currently up right now? Yeah. They're available right now on the CMF website. So people can start filling them out and then they can start submitting them into Dialog. And yeah, you, we, can, you can apply uh, as soon as it, opens like October 2nd or whatever you want. Keep in mind, we're not going to look at it until, you know, probably the 16th. Everybody, yeah. Yeah. Until the 16th. Okay, great. Um, I have some questions about, uh, it seems there's a little bit of confusion for writers who are not currently incorporated and will be applying. They want to know what they should put um, in those fields. If, they well, they can, have, if they're not incorporated right now. They can put their, their, their name as the applicant. It's just that eventually they're going to have to submit the, the incorporation documents and their company information in order to move forward. But for the purposes of applying, they can, they can fill out just their name, address, okay. that so information. If I was doing it, which I clearly am not, because I am not a screenwriter, um, it would just be, I could just put Lana Castleman on exactly. it. Exactly. Okay. It's Great. just that eventually, as, as your project is selected, you're going to have to be a single purpose company. So that, ha well, that will have to happen. Right, because that's the only way that you can sort of, you can transfer the funds to the individual, right? Or to the, the, the successful candidate. Yeah, we have to contract with an incorporated company. Yeah. We can't contract with an individual. Okay, Great. Um, someone's asking if we have an HST number, personally, should we put it in or not? Since it won't there be is, the same as the eventual corporation's HST number. There is a field in that, in the, when you create your organization for that. Okay, great. Um, I think this is more a question for you, Joe. 
Um, somebody's asking, um, for example, for the project, if the show must take place in Canada. You're, you had said that the show should take place in Canada, but can the show also be about Canadians experiencing adventures abroad? Yeah, it depends on the genre. So that's why appendix reading appendix A um, is so <laughs> important. Uh, so if you're doing a documentary series, yeah, sure. If you're doing uh, a, a drama, if you're writing a treatment about a, a you know an FBI agent, no. You know it has to be a Canadian story. Um, you you can certainly write about it if you're doing a drama a procedural or something. You can sure, certainly write if it's, it has to be set in Canada. So if it's set in Canada and sometimes they travel, that's okay. But it has to be set in Canada. That's for drama. Documentary, you can go anywhere in the world. Okay. So read it, read Appendix A. It's really important. And for example, so for, for an animated project, those are often not set in any real world. That's okay. That's okay. Well, you can, you yeah. can have animated uh, can be, um, well, also I should say for drama as well, you can, um, <laughs> we should do a whole other session on that. <laughs> but uh, for uh, drama, if it's, um, if it's generic, that's okay. The but, you know, don't, don't have a generic cop series that has a USA Today mailbox on every street corner or something, you know. But for animation as well, I mean, if it takes place in um, a, uh, you know, a... Fictitious sci town or a, yeah. a fantasy setting. A fantasy, right. That's fine. Those things are okay. Right. And someone to add to that, someone's asking about stories about Canadians who have roots in other countries. Is that again? What is it? Is it a is it a drama series? Is it a doc? What is it? I believe it's for drama. Is what they're asking about. I mean, I don't know what what does that mean? Is that a, is it about a Canadian guy who goes to Scotland? I mean, it depends what it is. Okay, great. Um, someone else is asking, uh, they're saying they're applying with a live action project and they're wondering about for the 10 eligible hours if they can use a combination of animated and live action shows. No. Okay. Good to know. Um, they're coming in fast and furiously. Um, <laughs> Someone's asking if you would be able to walk through the budget forum form. He says there are many mysterious sections and he's unsure how to fill it out. Um, I mean, I don't know if we're gonna, we can walk through on this call uh, going through the, the budget, but certainly I would say uh, start by contacting coordination. They can give you a hand in that process. Um, and if you have any other questions, I mean, coordination is good at, at contacting us uh, or an analyst to, to help you out. But first line of defense is definitely coordination to help you prepare all that. Great, and get that ready. And, and they've got a little bit of time now to, to, to get that. Now, yeah. now is this time to start yeah. contacting coordination, start going through those documents. If you have any questions uh, in, the, in the lead up to the deadline, I would start doing that now. Lynn, I'd just like to say one thing. I know that um, from, I spoke to our coordination team yesterday and people are reaching out, which is great. Um, but uh, people are also sending in um, uh, documents um, and asking us to approve them before they apply. And that's, um, that's not something that we can do considering it's a selective one. Well, you wouldn't pre-verify the 10 hours, for example. Uh, well, sure. Over, yeah, we could do something like that, but they're asking us to read contracts, oh, okay. um, and we're not going to do that. No, um, that's a question for lawyers, probably. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, someone's asking if you can show the screen again about the uh, with the coordinating team's emails on it. Oh or, yeah, um, yeah, no problem. Okay. So it's cmf.fmc.coordination at telefilm.ca. Um, 
I guess you can leave that up for for. Oh yeah, minute. sure. Um, but uh, I we did get a question about the actual um, pitch document submissions. People are wondering whether that should be structured like something that they would pitch a broadcaster with, or I know there's a 2,500 word maximum. Yeah. On those creative materials, but. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, uh, I don't know really what to say about that. It's a, this is a writer's fund. Um, presumably other writers will be uh, reading this, so not um, broadcasters. But um, saying that, I, you know, it needs to be um, the best work that you can submit because it's going to be competing with a lot of other treatments. So um, do what you think is right, I guess. Um, and including, you know, if, if you're visual and you need to put in, um, um, you know, add um, photos or something, that's fine too. But um, as far as I know, this is the jury is not going to be made up of a bunch of broadcasters. So um, uh, tailor it that way towards a, a writer, I suppose. Okay. Um, someone's asking if they're correct in assuming that we have to have all of our rights cleared in order to apply rather yeah. than using the grant. Uh, in yeah, and for, that's a great question. Um, for development, um, you have to have the rights for at least 24 months. Okay, great. Um, someone's asking, can a pitch page with an image be included in the application, which I think you... Yep. Said. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, uh, okay. People would like to know when they you expect roughly to start um, making decisions on on who's going to get these funds. Yeah, we're going. Uh, decision letters will be out before um, we break for the holidays at Christmas. Oh, so if we're going to meet. We're going to meet mid December and choose projects. Um, so I imagine the week of the, I don't have my calendar up here. So the week of the um, December, um, probably the week of the 21st. Okay. So, so yeah. So we'll either, just, you know, really disappoint you or make you super happy. I'm sorry in advance. Um, back to uh, credits and genre again. Um, Someone's wondering if they only have a science fiction, uh, science fiction scripted credits, can they apply with a comedy project since they both fall under the drama category? Oh, that's a great question. I, I guess so. Sean, what? To me, it all counts as, as yeah, scripted drama. I think it's all drama. scripted. I think it's all scripted, so I think that's fine. Right. So yeah, as long as it's classified as a drama. drama. Yeah, I mean, it's broken up into genres. So uh, yeah, so a sci-fi. Yeah, I think that's fine. I mean, just to go back to Jill's presentation, the example that we gave of the drama category was Shit's Creek. So to me, it all all falls under scripted drama. Right. Yeah, that is inarguably a comedy. <laughs> <laughs> um, great. Uh, wow, I think um, to everybody out there, are there more questions? Yes, oh, that's, go. yep, that's my email. Oh, yes. Thanks, uh, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Um, to everybody out there, are there, are there any more questions? Otherwise, um, I think we can let you go. Oh, wait. More questions. Just can you open and close application easily? Um, oh, you mean to save it to work yeah. on? Yeah. Yes, you can. Yeah. You have That's yeah. Great. There's a save button. That's a good question, actually. So it's something that you can work on ongoing once you create your account. Uh, it's only when you f click the final submit button uh, that it all is sh sent off to us on our end. Start early to avoid disappointment. Please start early. 
Um, someone would like to get further explanation on the rights that are required to apply. Could you go over that again? Um, Jill, the, the, the rights to the, the project that they need? Uh, sure, we want to see um, a chain of title document, um, you know, knowing that, you know, that it originated with you, or that if you're, um, you know, uh, optioning a book or something, um, we need to know that everything's in place uh, for you to have the rights to, you know, uh, write a treatment about it. That's basically it. Great. And someone's asking about, uh, you know, short films that were screened at a film festival. I am assuming they no. are no. eligible. No, not eligible. It, it must be on a broadcaster, Canadian yeah. broadcaster. That's right. Okay. And um, with the five uh, credits for the diversity of voices, someone's wondering if promo commercial writing is considered a credit if it aired on. It is not. That is not one of the genres we support, so no, it's not, unfortunately. Yes, it has to be from those those genres listed That's in, right. in, the, in the guidelines, correct? Right. right. Um, someone's asking, it's not about this fund, but they're wondering if the pre-development fund is now open as well. I think it's opened and closed. Yep. Nice. It's closed now, I think all the money's gone. Oh, okay. Oh, it's closed already. Yeah, it's closed already. Here's the thing about CMF funds, guys. We have so many funds and we open the doors, uh, you know, the beginning of April and uh, the funds don't last that long. Everybody uh, jumps in there. So October, or like uh, end of September, October, it's a long time to wait to apply. So get in there early. Um, you know, our new guidelines will be out. Um, you know, end of March, beginning of April. Um, contact us, um, talk to us about what you want to do. We'll help you find funding, but don't wait too long. They're not infinite. We have one um, attendee who's wondering, and I, I, this would be probably speculation at this point, if there will be more flexibility on the hours for kids and family content, uh, simply because the, the opportunities for broadcasting Canada are, are diminishing quite quickly due to chorus. Meaning, meaning, can you apply with less than 10? Yes, this is. No. Okay. I mean, and here's the thing. We had different rules last year for this fund. We pivoted and this is the way we're doing it this year. Who knows what's gonna happen next year? Depends on how many projects we receive if we're not completely overwhelmed with projects this year you know they'll change the um, guidelines next year to open it up ag again maybe it'll be eight hours next year like who knows right so but this year it's it's um it's the 10 or the five credits right and and at the end of every uh, i'm sure every program you do a review of yeah what, what didn't all that kind of stuff yeah okay um Great. Uh, I think I think that's all all we have uh, in terms of questions. If you have any questions, type them now, or actually just get in, uh, get in touch with. Or just contact coordination. Yeah, contact your coordinator. Okay, great. So I would like to thank you both uh, for doing this today. Um, We'll also be posting a bit of a recap of this on the WGC website. And this, uh, this video will be posted on WGC's YouTube channel if people would like to refer to it uh, later. You'll get notifications, well, from me uh, when all of this is available, which should be um, early next week. So again, thank you very much, everybody. And uh, thanks for tuning in and have a great weekend all. Thank you. Thank and you. to all the writers, I'm sorry for my spelling mistakes on my PowerPoint. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Bye.